Before I was diagnosed with diabetes, I lived pretty much the life that I wanted to based on pleasure. I was a bit of a bon vivant, went and listened to live music, uh, had drinks and ate for pleasure and exercised for pleasure. When I got diagnosed as pre-diabetic, I definitely did not want to take the medications, but I realized at that point it had become more serious. Diabetes is a chronic condition where there are high levels of sugar in the blood, and these high levels of blood sugar can lead to complications down the line. It affects the immune system and the skin. It's the leading cause of amputation in the United States. It can certainly cause death, and so for these reasons, it's a very, very interesting model of disease to help intervene upon. We now know that there are many inequities in diabetes care um, across our nation. Not only is diabetes more prevalent in Black, Hispanic, and First Nations communities, but we also know that uh, people from minoritized communities are less likely to receive certain treatments. After looking at our own internal data, we saw 2.3 times higher prevalence of prediabetes among Black primary care patients compared to white patients. We also saw 1.4 times higher prevalence of uncontrolled diabetes for Black and Hispanic or Latino primary care patients compared to white patients. What we're doing at Boston Medical Center through the Health Equity Accelerator is shifting the paradigm of diabetes care. And one way that we're doing that is by developing registries where a population health specialist can review the list and determine what patients are in need of screening. As a population health specialist, I complete outreach calls to patients with uncontrolled type 2 diabetes. My goal is to help the patients to be engaged in their diabetes care. I do reminder calls for their uh, appointments with the clinical pharmacist. I also complete a standardized surveys with the goal to identify different gaps and needs that the patients might have. There's also uh, visits with our clinical pharmacist. Um, where they receive sort of tailored counseling as well as medication management for their diabetes. We also screen these patients for depression, and those who screen positive are referred to a separate but integrated diabetes depression intervention that's run by our behavioral health specialists that are integrated in primary care. I was surprised by the team concept because I came from a time when you only had a physician that was your main uh, person to talk to, but now there's a full team involved and it's easy access with communication and I find that to be crucial. We are connecting the patients to services that otherwise they probably wouldn't have access to. Our teaching kitchen where individuals with chronic health conditions can come and learn how to prepare healthy foods, can receive dietary education, and our therapeutic food pantry, which is um, one of the most wonderful and, and special things that we have to offer our patients who are experiencing food insecurity. Another part of uh, this intervention is continuous glucose monitors, which is a tool that many of our patients find very helpful. Um, what that is, is a monitor that one can wear on, usually on the shoulder, uh, just on the skin, that continuously checks an individual's blood sugar level, which uh, eliminates the requirement for patients to stick their finger you know, several times a day uh, to monitor their blood sugar. It's actually very useful for me to determine what my blood sugar is actually doing. When I used to prick my fingers in the morning, it would tend to run high and we could never figure out quite why. But with a continual monitor, I was able to figure out uh, what causes it to go high and whether it's acceptable for it to go high. So for instance, if I swim a mile and a half, the blood sugar monitor tends to register a high number, but we know that it's because we get higher readings after heavy exercise like weightlifting or swimming. And so it's a process of learning and monitoring and continually improving. One of the most striking impacts that we've had so far is that of Black and Hispanic or Latino patients enrolled in this intervention. Over 200, more than a third of the patients, have already reduced their A1C below an initial goal of 9% within the first six months of the program. That is significant. Patients are becoming more engaged. They are managing their diabetes better. They are more committed to working with their clinical pharmacists and their primary care providers. The most exciting thing for me as someone who's devoted my career to the care of people with diabetes is the excitement, the energy, and the way resources and people are coming together to really change and improve um, the care we provide here at BMC.